So I'm going to be vlogging my entire work week and kind of talking you through a lot of things that I'm doing, obviously without, you know, showing company code and things like that, but it's to give you an idea what the actual real day-to-day -day life of a developer is. First thing that you're going to do every single day is something called stand-up. Stand-up is a meeting that happens every single morning or afternoon, depending on how your team does this. And it usually lasts like 15 to 20 minutes. It's not a long meeting, but the idea of stand-up is you go in, you kind of talk about what you did the day before. You discuss if you have blockers. Now, what are blockers? Something that's preventing you from actually finishing that task. Let's say you're working on a task and it requires another team's input. That would be a blocker, you know, waiting on them to finally come back to you and say, oh, we need you to do X, Y, Z for this to be successful. Or you could say something along the lines of, I'm trying to do this task. I have no idea how to go past this. That would be a blocker. So you discuss the blockers and people on your team can kind of help navigate that way for you. Try and look at this resource or check out this documentation on this page. This will probably help you find the solution that you're looking for. Those are the kinds of things that you would discuss during standup. And if you don't have any blockers, you would say something along the lines of no blockers, making success with X, Y, Z. It's like a very short update, but it kind of keeps everybody in the know of what it is that you're doing. And if you're stuck, they can help you. So after stand up, I go to our board. Our board, the way it's structured is you have several columns, a to-do column, a in-progress column, you know, code review column, things like that. When you don't have a task that you're doing is basically all the tasks that need to be done that haven't been started as of yet. So here I made an example of what the board would kind of look like. So you would have your to-do column here and you would have tickets underneath this. So we'll just add do me a favor, drop a like on this video. Helps me out the YouTube algorithm. A random ticket here and a random ticket here. So these all represent tickets, right? So I made this one ticket to kind of showcase what you would do. The tickets are normally arranged in the order that the product owner or product manager or the TPM, whoever's in charge of this, would kind of have it in order for you. So you would just take the next ticket to go. And so you can kind of see here, I added a ticket and when we click on it, we have this description. And this description tells you, number one, what they're trying to have you achieve, what the goal is for the business. Number two, it's going to tell you where they're kind of asking you to perform these tasks. And then you see over here, we have acceptance criteria. The acceptance criteria, meaning if it does this, then this is considered a past task. So here it's saying when on the secondary page of the website, we don't know what customers are clicking on. We need to add tracking to see what is performing well, what leads to higher rates of conversion, and what is performing under expectations. So add tracking to the following locations, A, B, and C. Okay, so since we're going to take that ticket, now we would add our name to this. Uh, depending on the tool that you use, it may look slightly different, but then we would track that over here to end development. Now, as I'm working on the ticket, they click on it, they see my name, of course, they know that I'm doing something. And so from here, if I run into an issue that I can't solve, and I've already discussed this with my manager or my team, I'd go ahead and place this in blocked. Having good comments that are kind of telling you what's going on, or if you're stuck there, it's really, really valuable and helpful, right? And especially if you're blocked and if you can describe in which way you're blocked, and how the other person can recreate that scenario. It's hard for you to tell me when I go to the second page of the website, I'm getting this error. Well, what did you do to create the error? Because if I don't know it, how am I supposed to recreate it? So adding those comments, very, very helpful. Then let's say if it's in development and everything is good, we now want this to get into code review. We will take this to this column with the code review column. Now someone will um, either go through this column when they have time after they've done an assignment, start code reviewing some tickets, manager would code review some tickets, or maybe you have someone who's dedicated to that and they would do the code review. So sometimes it's a one-on-one -on -one video call. Sometimes they just review the, the code and they leave comments. Sometimes they may send you a message on Slack or whatever it is that your team utilizes and tell you, hey, this is not good or hey, this is great. I'm merging it and passing it through, right? Nothing feels better than passing code review. Nothing feels worse than failing a code review. Uh, but to be honest, it's great because I use those code reviews as examples on how I can become better, adapt better habits and grow. After it goes through code review, we now put it in test. Depends on your company, my company, we have a dedicated QA team, quality assurance team, that will test the tickets. They will verify that the acceptance criteria is working, but they will also make sure that whatever automated test that they have, it's passing that as well. Once it's there, it now goes to your manager approval section and um, the manager just okays everything. Once they're, it's okayed and they see that, hey, I pulled this, you know, I went to the repo, I pulled the, the, the branch, everything looks good, I see no flaws, then we get ready to deploy it. So it'll be in ready to deploy and when it, 
depends on the company if you do daily deployments or a deployment every two weeks whatever it is that your um, system is set up for this is where all the tickets will be lined and on deployment night so once it's deployed everyone will verify that every single ticket is in the deployment usually the ones that actually did the tickets would be there on deployment to verify that their changes are visible there and working so they'll test it qa may do like an entire regression testing to make sure everything is working good and once all that is clear then we will slide this down to in production and complete so hopefully this gives you a better idea on what the workflow looks like and how you can actually be prepared. One of the most common questions that I get all the time is do programming certifications really, really matter when it comes to landing a job in tech and trying to stand out on the workforce? If you want to find out the answer to that question, check it out right there. One thing that I'm working on right now is actually a unique problem. So obviously I'm brand new to the code base and my understanding was these were two separate things. They weren't um, completely together. They weren't working in the same area but the ticket showcases that there's something that they share. And so now I'm trying to do a little uh, research and diving in to figure out what it is that they're sharing. My main stack is React and Go, and that's what I'm working in. So right now I'm trying to figure out how all this integrates together and how I can do this best. just finished lunch and I've been working for the last couple hours and I thought I'd give you all an update. So I've been working through this code base and getting myself familiar with different areas that I wasn't familiar with before. I'm trying to figure out how to basically solve this ticket essentially. I've been talking with a coworker of mine who's kind of steered me in the right direction. One of my rules is if I haven't made progress after a certain amount of time, I need to reach out because if I stay stagnant for far too long, I'm wasting not just my own time, but company time. And I, I could be making way more progress getting like that direction that I'm looking for. But one thing that I realized, and I don't feel like this gets talked about often enough, is how much reading you will do when you become a developer. I think when you are a brand new developer, you're always making brand new projects, starting from scratch, you're making these repos. And the reality is, you're probably almost never going to do that in a professional environment. Very, very rare are you making an entire application from scratch, right? Traditionally, you're working on a ticket in an existing code base with millions and lines of code where you're basically going through solving a problem, adding that value. In. The idea that you may have, like you're always gonna be making a project from scratch, that's not gonna be the case. You're always gonna be tweaking something here or fixing something that broke in this one file or component or some or adding a new component, but you're never gonna be creating an entire application from scratch. You, it will happen, but very, very rarely. Not to the extent of what you probably think of making a brand new project every week, not even close. And so you need to be very comfortable with reading code, finding out where the problems may arise, finding the bugs, debugging, adding um, breakpoints or adding console log statements. These are things that are pretty much gonna be the backbone of a lot of what you do on your day to day. And make sure that you're not just comfortable with reading through code bases, but documentation as well to kind of give you an idea of what's happening and where you should be looking. But make sure you're comfortable with that because I can tell you right now, I probably spent several hours just reading, trying to figure out how all these things are connecting together. And it definitely takes a while. So just be prepared for that. I think that's something that's not talked about often enough. And we probably should. You're gonna be reading way more than you probably write. I've read way more code on average than I write on an average day, right? Like I'm constantly reading pages and pages of code to kind of add, you know, five, six, seven, eight, ten lines in one spot here, add some lines there. You're gonna always be tweaking. So make sure you're comfortable with reading a lot of code. One thing that I would also say is you don't need to necessarily be a pro at this as of yet. Understand what a CMS is. What is a CMS? So to give you an idea, a CMS is a content management system. And essentially the goal with the CMS is there's a lot of things that change day to day or week to week with the business side of things, right? And we don't necessarily want the business to constantly bother the developers to change an image here or to change this one line of text there. And it becomes very, very chaotic when you have 
these non-technical tasks coming your way. So a great solution for this is the CMS. You can give the power back to the business in the aspects of changing an image or changing some text. No easy items, nothing too crazy for them to kind of deal with and they can't break the website that way. So the CMS kind of gives them a safe space to alter those things, see how it looks and send it through without it affecting the developers having to go in there constantly and change those things instead of little tweaks here and there that the business decides to change. Maybe they're changing pictures due to the holiday season or maybe they're running a campaign in the month of December, right? Those are simple little things they can tweak without us having to go in there and hard code those changes. Hey, so just finished up the day. I actually just jumped out of the shower and uh, kind of wanted to recap what kind of happened. I got my got my ticket merged in, got my first merge request approved, so I'm feeling good right there. That was pretty good. Had a pretty good successful day, figured out what I was looking at, and hopefully gonna just kick back for a bit. May edit this up probably, but uh, hang out with my friends for a little bit, play, you know, maybe play some Valorant or something. Uh, my biggest hope out of this entire thing is that you now have an understanding of what happens in a professional environment and how you can navigate that a little bit better. Hopefully it gives you some like really valuable insight. That, that's my biggest goal is it gave you realistic and actionable things to understand and to kind of realize on what you need to prepare yourself for and give you a better idea on how a professional environment even works well together. I'm glad you met my version of a rubber ducky as well. So hopefully that was cool. The, the one biggest thing that I want you to take away from this entire experience is no matter how much, how big, or how overwhelming something will be, if you have an amazing team having your back, you can totally conquer it. That is why one thing that I always prioritize when it comes to a company isn't necessarily the company, the name, or the prestige. It's who am I working with? If I'm working with some really great people, that's totally worth it for me. That's worth a pay cut, a pay increase, because if you work with great people, it's gonna make it easy to accomplish tasks, it's gonna make it easy to find out information. To be honest, it's gonna be make it really easy to hit deadlines and goals. So team first, everything else second as far as I'm concerned. And I'm so grateful that I have a phenomenal team around me with great insight and amazing, amazing human beings. If you found some value in this video, please drop a like, subscribe, share all that good stuff. Truly, truly appreciate it.